because of evolution and the fact that when we're de dealing with infants, most of us are made uncomfortable and we feel we have to rush in and do something. Mm -hmm. And what therefore therapists do is too much. Because while maybe with an infant there's something active you need to do, with an adult there isn't much you need to do. So most of the do's and don'ts fall under what not to do. And uh, so I, let me give a couple of examples of things not to do. First of all, you don't crowd the person. You don't come over and do lots of patting and there, there, there. And mm -hmm. Because if you've cried recently yourself, you know you really need some space around you. Mm -hmm. The environment needs to be safe. Uh, but you you don't want people hovering over you, and you don't want them asking a lot of questions about what what's it what is it what's gone wrong what nothing is wrong this is a natural process, and uh, it seems to be best to let it continue uh, through through its endpoint. There's plenty of time for interrogation later. You can later you can say uh, what helped you cry. But that's, you say that afterward, not during the tears. During mm -hmm. the tears, you do nothing. If you're close enough and you have the right kind of relationship, you might just reach out and touch the person's arm lightly to, to let them know that you are there. You might, if the tissue box is positioned correctly, hand them a tissue. Mm -hmm. Although I once got myself into some trouble with that because I handed this woman a tissue and she said, oh, I don't need that. And it broke up the entire mood because I was too quick. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't want to, this is not a time for interpretations, uh, and we don't want to treat the tears as if they're the problem. The tears are never the problem. Mm -hmm. The tears, in fact, are a good outward sign that, that active processing is happening. So one of our... Uh, uh, axioms is if tears are flowing do nothing mm. however if you are tense that will tend to inhibit the tears remember we don't cry unless it's safe and part of the safety is not making the other person uncomfortable so Harvey Jackins used to say that some of the male therapists couldn't understand why they're crying why they're clients weren't crying and the answer was the male therapists were uncomfortable with tears yeah and uh, I've learned over the years just to sit back it's in fact it's a compliment that the person is willing to cry in your presence it means they regard you as a safety node uh, and, uh, and and not as an enemy and that they are going to be willing to let you be a part of this so it's a great compliment, and you allow the person to enjoy being with you in this way. Uh, yes. I mentioned that we say sometimes afterward, what is the thought that helped you cry? Yeah. I do not say what made you cry, because I don't like the idea that one person controls another person's feelings. So what is it in connection with you are crying? not what made you cry and I don't I don't like the causal the, the hard causality of what made you mm -hmm. and it also implies it's something uh, disagreeable or bad to say what made you do it so I say uh, uh, what helped you cry which which mm -hmm. is a po positive connotation mm -hmm. and from Jack and long ago I learned that uh, it's much more productive to say what is the thought that helped you cry not what is what are you feeling if you say what are you feeling you too often get a very unhelpful report of physiological uh, readings you know oh my well I'm feeling this in my stomach and I'm you know. that's not what we want we want the image the thought the movie and we particularly want to know what is the thought or image that allowed the transition from stage one to stage two because that's psychologically meaningful. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let me stop there for a minute. Okay. 
So the the really so if if we have what you're challenging are unconsidered assumptions that tears have necessarily have something to do with sadness that there's something bad about tears or that the therapists have to uh, provide some kind of psychological band-aid and in fact what you're saying if there's a and there are context effects all but essentially tears are self-regulating yeah that the very fact of tears is someone's moving from a state of arousal to a state of uh, feeling more balanced um, uh, going off duty is, is the phrase that you, you like to use and that, that basically the tears are the, are a therapeutic ally and and are providing something typically uh, that's a lot more potent than anything that we might do at that moment. Yeah, they mean that you're in exactly the right spot with the client mm. yeah. and you don't want to do anything you don't want to you don't want to move on you don't want to be in a hurry mm -hmm. By the way, everybody always stops crying. Nobody ever just continues crying for the rest of their life. It's not an emergency. Right. Yeah. Um, so you want to really relax, and and uh, something useful has just happened. 